Uh, our next speaker, uh, Janos Gado from Budapest, was unable to make it to Bloomington. So we have asked Jean Kahan to please read his presentation. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so old school anti-Semitism, almost outdated. New school anti-Semitism, not yet trendy. Attitudes towards Jews in Viktor Orban's semi-authoritarian regime. The Orban regime, Orban regime's stance towards the Jews is a reversed image of progressive Western attitudes. Progressive Western public opinion and media are often pro-Palestinian and highly critical of Israel. The Orban government has been firmly pro-Israeli over the past couple of years and seems pretty uninterested in listening to Palestinian grievances. Hungarian representatives, just like their Polish, Czech, Slovak colleagues, don't rush to condemn Israel in various UN bodies, often obstructing in this way the adoption of a unified European position. In progressive Western public opinion and the media, Holocaust consciousness is crucial. Progressive politicians bow their head to the victims of the Holocaust and basically recognize their nation's responsibility in the massacre of European Jewry. In Orban's Hungary, the memory of the Holocaust is very important, but it is not supposed to overshadow the grievances of the Hungarian nation in the past and in the present. Hungarian politicians bow their head to the victims of the Holocaust, but don't really recognize their nation's responsibility in the tragedy of European Jewry. However, in official messages to the Jewish community, they tend to admit the responsibility of the Hungarian state. The progressive West steps over the traditional 20th century religious national worldview, espouses 21st century multiculturalism, and regards the respect of the other as the core of its policy. This policy is supposed to be a safe haven for Jews who once, as the ultimate others, were victims of the vilest persecutions. Unlike in the progressive West, in Hungary the other, mostly migrants, is considered as suspect, <coughs> strange, frightening. It is someone insensitive to Western democratic culture. It is someone who does not respect women and hates Jews. In Orban's Hungary, the traditional 20th century religious national worldview is still alive and valid and is supposed to be a safe haven for the Jews, who, in the multicultural West, are harassed and persecuted by a coalition of Muslim immigrants and far-left local politicians. Only a strong nation-state like Hungary can be able to protect the gates of Europe, which would otherwise be inundated, inundated by hordes of anti-Zionist and anti-Semitic immigrants who represent a lethal danger for the Jews. This is how the Hungarian government argues. Progressive Western liberal political culture regards the Orban government as anti-democratic and anti-Semitic at the same time. It is accused of pursuing the 20th century old, old school anti-Semitism. In the traditionalist political culture of the Orban government, it is the progressive West which is accused of being anti-Semitic. It is accused of pursuing the 21st century new school anti-Semitism, anti-Zionism. In the progressive West, the good Jew is the one who espouses multiculturalism and keeps his, her distance toward the nat traditional notions of the Jewish nation and religion. In traditional Central Europe, the good Jew is one who espouses the traditional notions of nation and religion and rejects multiculturalism. To put it very bluntly, in Western Europe, Zionists are the bad guys. In Central Eastern Europe, Zionists are the good guys. <laughs> the Orban regime's policy in this respect is closest to that of the modernized Western far-right parties, such as the Front National or the German AfD. One crucial difference is worth mentioning. Western far-right parties often strive to limit Jewish and Muslim religious practices like circumcision and ritual slaughtering. The Orban government acts in the opposite way. It encourages Jewish religious practice and promotes kosher slaughtering, 
like the building of a brand new meat factory exporting kosher products to Western Europe and Israel. In the glorious year of 1989, the nations of the Eastern Bloc secured for themselves the right to build up the same democratic institutions which had long been established in the Western part of Europe. Operating democratic institutions is a challenge and requires a high degree of political maturity. These new democracies provide proof of this maturity. However, by this time, Western democracies had achieved a higher level of maturity. The culture of self-reflection mentioned above was gaining ground. It was this kind of maturity which proved too much of a challenge for the new democracies, which stopped at this point and started to retreat. Self-reflection and soul-searching are not unknown in this part of the world. However, over the past 10 to 15 years, this culture has been marginalized in many countries. It became a tolerated minority opinion, while unreflecting nationalism prevailed. The latter became a semi-official opinion cultivated by newly established scientific institutions. Hungary and Poland are the best known examples of this kind of restoration. Holocaust research is a highly advanced discipline in these countries, but its results are frightening to, for the nationalist mind. Collaboration or indifference toward the Jews in these countries during the Holocaust was much more common than selfless help. The venerated nation, allegedly itself a victim, pro proved to be very different. This disappointing picture is simply intolerable for the new ultra-nationalist right which has come to power in these countries. Countering this unfavorable image became imperative for the new right, which took serious measures to promote the traditional image of the nation. The best known example is the infamous Polish law that makes it an, an offense to attribute Nazi crimes to the Polish nation or state. This is tantamount to legally restraining free speech and historical research. In Hungary, the government has, es has established new pseudo-scientific institutions to promote a government agenda in the realm of social sciences, history, and letters. The Veritas Institutes Institute, established in 2013, its undeclared mission is to whitewash the record of the authoritarian anti-Semitic Horty regime, 1920 to 44, which re is regarded by many nationalists as a political ideological predecessor of the current government. With its ultra-nationalist policy, Orban's Fidesz party managed to take away the positions of the far-right Jobbik party, which in the past four to five years ended up by rejecting its, fa its fascist past and tried hard to find a new platform not too extremist, not too nationalist, opposing the new elite's corruption uh, and abuse of power. However, Fidesz managed to take the far-right position while maintaining its control of the moderate right positions as well. Orban is at his best when pointing his finger at various enemies. In his prophecy, hordes of Muslim migrants are getting ready to take over our peaceful world, and this migration is masterminded by George Soros and Brussels bureaucrats. What motivates them to do so? In Orban's world, liberals and cosmopolites, cosmopolites are sworn enemies of Christian and national traditions. The, this anti-democratic government strives to limit freedom of speech. Consequently, it limits the freedom of anti-Semites as well. Using its excessive political power, it has managed to achieve dominant positions in the economy. Using its economic power, it has achieved a dominant role in the media. All but one nationwide daily paper belongs to loyal entrepreneurs. A huge pro-government conglomerate, conglomerate dominates the market of radio and television stations. In the field of weekly papers and the internet, the independent media are still quite strong. 
the government media are all disciplined, aggressive, and keen to fight enemies at home and abroad. They regularly employ character assassination as a tool to overcome people deemed dangerous. Since the enemies are often foreigners, liberals, cosmopolitans, orchestrated by such Jewish businessmen as Shorosh, one might see some anti-Semitic motifs in the government propaganda, especially when you see the Jewish banker's grinning face on hundreds of billboards nationwide. However, Viktor Orban declared several times that the government has a policy of zero tolerance towards anti-Semitism. George Birnbaum, one of the masterminds of the anti soros campaign, recently explained in an interview, when we planned the campaign, we never thought for a second about Soros being a Jew. On March 15, 2018, some days before the general elections, Orban delivered a speech in which he stated the following, we have to fight an enemy that is different from us, not open, but hiding, not straightforward, but crafty, not honest, but base, not national, but international, does not believe in working, but speculates with money, does not have its own homeland, but feels it, it owns the whole world. It is not generous, but vengeful, and it attacks the heart, especially, especially when the heart is red, white, and green. These seemingly contradictory declarations can be synthesized as follows. The Orban government has nationalized the issue of anti-Semitism. The government me media regularly accuse others of anti-Semitism while rejecting any similar charge for itself. He grew self-confident to the point of trying to define who was anti-Semitic and who was not. In this effort, the government media repeatedly pointed to the anti-Zionism of the Western left liberal circles, blaming them for calling Israel an apartheid state. Using the issue of immigration, which has caused a serious identity crisis in Western Europe, Orban has positioned himself as a key figure of the old-style Christian anti-liberal nationalist camp. His message is basically this. Those on his right like the infamous Jobbik party, are incorrigible Nazis, while those on his left are irresponsible politicians who support the cosmopolitan left liberal camp and open the gates of Europe to mass Islamic immigration, which is a lethal danger to Jews. In his interpretation, therefore, Hungary is a safe haven for Jews, where left and right-wing extremism are equally suppressed. Soros, as the ultimate puppet master and his left liberal disciples, foreign and Hungarian, fit quite well the good old image of the anti-national, anti-religious, liberal cosmopolitan Jewish conspiracy. However, this image of the hostile Jew <coughs> is well defined and well separated from other sorts of Jew hatred, like religious anti-Judaism or postmodern anti-Zionism. To the contrary, over the past couple of years, Orban could be seen time and again in the company of ultra-Orthodox Jews. Moreover, he is a dedicated ally of the current Israeli government and has friendly relations with Netanyahu. This immense self-confidence motivates Orban to try to consolidate the issue of Holocaust remembrance for good. The essence of his solution is this. <coughs> Hungarians recognize the immensity of, and uniqueness of the Holocaust. In exchange, the Jews decline to seat the Hungarian nation in the dock. A certain amount of Hungarian responsibility is tolerable. As Gulyás, minister uh, of the prime minister's office, declared on the occasion of the latest International Holocaust Memorial, Memorial Day, the Hungarian state bears a responsibility for not protecting its citizens during the Holocaust. There is no collective guilt, but there is a state responsibility. Otherwise, the message Orban likes to transmit is that Hungarians and Jews share a common fate in good times and bad times. In order to convey this message, a new Holocaust memorial site has been planned by the government, the infamous House of Fates, House of Fates is not the first Holocaust memorial site in Budapest. The first one was the Holocaust Memor Memorial and 
Documentation Center inaugurated in 2005 by a previous socialist government. However, that institution strongly emphasized strongly Hungarian responsibility for the Holocaust. Therefore, it didn't fit the Orban government's narrative. House of Fates was to be located in a smaller railway station building out of service by this time. Yet, only the reconstruction of the building could be completed because a vigorous protest of local and foreign Jewish organizations prevented them from installing the exhibition they wanted to realize. Protesting Jews demanded to see the scenario of the exhibition, and the organizers declined to deliver it. Respectable institutions like Yad Vashem expressed their criticism, which resulted in a deadlock. This lasted some three years when the re-elected government made another effort to complete the project. They decided to involve a Jewish partner, the Hungarian branch of Chabad, of the Chabad movement, which has a strong position in Hungarian Jewish life. Chabad is more loyal to the government than the established Jewish community, Marshizis, which cautiously criticized the government on issues like anti-Semitism and Holocaust remembrance. The Hungarian Chabad leader, Rabbi Shlomo Kovesh, held a press conference together with Maria Schmidt, the regime's official historian. Kovesh stressed that the exhibition would be opened this very year and emphasis should be given to, quote, universal moral conclusions, which in Jewish circles was interpreted as avoiding the question of Hungarian responsibility. As could be expected, a new wave of protest followed and the deadlock remained. Orban, who managed to overcome so many challenges, has failed to solve the issue of Holocaust remembrance. By desperately struggling with the memory of the Holocaust, blaming a rich Jewish businessman and Brussels bureaucrats for all the hardships Hungary and Europe must endure, whipping up a xenophobic atmosphere, praising Israel for its democratic achievement in a hostile region, graciously funding Jewish religious institutions, Viktor Orban offers a unique blend of anti-Semitic and philo-Semitic attitudes. It is pretty much the opposite of the progressive Western European blend where anti-Zionism is trendy and anti-Semitism is rejected. Thank you very much. Thank you.